Welcome to Dropping Dimes this week. Uh, I am your host, Matt Nost, and uh, we're going to have an interesting uh, show this week. Uh, a little more of a retrospective of one individual's career. And uh, obviously, it's what everybody's talking about. It's uh, It's been basically the bulk of my internet consumption, by and large, for the past few days. But here to join me to talk about Kobe, all things Kobe, the, the history, the... His legacy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is uh, Brian Moses, host and creator of Roast Battle on Comedy Central. Nobody better to have on than me. <laughs> well, you know, it was fortuitous because you're one of my friends who's a Lakers fan. And we yeah. had, had this booked for a while. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, Sunday rolls around. I was doing prep for the show. <sighs> just looking at, honestly, the, how bad the T-Wolves have been. And I was just looking yeah. at... <laughs> Numbers and it was going through, and they're now they've had an 11 game losing streak. Second worst record in the West, right? Yeah, um, they're now on a 10 game losing streak. So they've had two streaks of 10 games or more of losing. And I was like, man, okay, let's try and put this in historical perspective. And then, Is it coaching or players with them? Uh, I mean, obviously it's both. But I'm saying, like, what is it? I don't know. I don't know. That's that's what I was getting into. Yeah, it's yeah. I, I heard something yesterday. I think Bamani Jones was saying he was just like. It's, if you guys keep saying, you know, uh, uh, Carl Anthony Towns is this top five player, then show me. That's You know what I mean? It's I'm like, in agreement. Yeah, like what is that with him? It's, it's stats. And Wiggins. Yeah, stats on – it's empty. They're empty if you can't win with it. Yeah. But, yeah, I was in the middle of this, and then I started getting texts from people because I was on Twitter, and I saw Rip Kobe, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera but there was no – Right, Nothing official right. had been out yet. So I was like, oh, it must be – honestly, my first thought was – People were saying it metaphorically because he had been passed for third the night before. That's what I thought too. It was just like, oh yeah, R.I.P. Kobe. It's like, oh, now you're like, you're not, you're not even on the conversation anymore yeah. for like. You're not go. top three, right? Uh, for scoring, so does that hurt your legacy, exactly. et cetera, et cetera? Right. So it's like, oh, it's you a know, good correlation though. Uh, mama, mama goes down. You mm -hmm. know, a peg. What does this mean? And mm -hmm. then I was, uh, uh, Catherine, my wife, was sitting on the couch and she's like, "Did Kobe die?" And I was like, "No, it's this thing on." Twitter, whatever else, and I refreshed, and they're like, TMZ is reporting. And I was like, holy shit. So I went over to their site, and that's when I just spent the next couple of hours trying to get any kind of update, even though... Everybody. Yeah. Everybody's trying to refresh, refresh, refresh. Like, this isn't real. Like, my dad called me, I think it was, because, like, there was, nothing on, there was nothing on. It was just Pro Bowl minutia for the most part, you know. Uh, yeah, nonsense. Yeah, so I think I was, like, playing, like, NBA 2K, actually. My dad called me. He's like, hey, what's this Kobe thing? I'm like... I don't know, he got passed, and, like, you know, LeBron, and he was, like, you know, they're tweeting each other. He's like, no, Kobe, they say Kobe's dead. I'm like, what? So then, like, I, yeah, obviously I flipped everything on. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. What? And I just, I've never, I mean, I, I'm yeah, I'm a Laker fan first, and I love the city of L.A. And, and, and the love they have for this team. But I've never seen a bomb like this. I mean, like, I was around during, I mean, I was a kid, obviously, when, the Magic Johnson HIV announcement happened. Sure. But, I mean, with with technology and media the, the way they are now, it's like I've never been overrun, you know what I mean, and overwhelmed. Maybe like, you know, like a death, yeah. like maybe a Michael Jackson, a Prince, but this felt bigger. Well, it, what's interesting, because I, I read someone posted online just scouring through all this and bringing up the fact that given the relative by sports comparisons infancy of NBA basketball, we haven't had to go through this a lot. No. We still have, we have Bill Russell, we have Jerry West, we have Oscar Robinson. Yeah, Michael have, Jordan. Yeah. yeah, we still got Michael Jordan. You got Magic, you got Larry. Shaq, you got, yeah, you yeah. have all of them still. You got Kareem. Allen Iverson, you have all of yeah. them, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's Wilt. Yeah, Dr. It's, J, right. Dr. J's still around. Right. Like, there's very few of the upper echelons yeah, they're still around. Yeah, they they're have, all there's still no, around. Like, tragic. Yeah, I guess the most tragic thing since was the Magic Johnson HIV announcement for the NBA. Yeah, yeah. I mean it was like in that time, like George Mike and passed. But right. to anybody that doesn't know anything about basketball, that's a nothing right. kind of story. He passed, but it was like he was he was old. Yeah, he was super old. Yeah, yeah like all right, yeah. But he was out of the public conscious. I mean, Shaq paid for his funeral. Right. Right. Uh, wow. Yeah. I, I, I remember that story coming out. I was like, good for Shaq, like, mm -hmm. you know, honoring the heritage of the game, and you wouldn't be making this crazy amount of money if there weren't dudes like George Mike in back right. in the, you know, 50s, 40s, 50s, whatever Paying it was. forward, absolutely. Yeah, and just, you know, you got to you gotta do that. Yeah. But, yeah, we still have all these guys, and then to lose somebody at 41, and now it looks back, you look back at his life, and just like, dude, he won an Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> he won an Oscar. <laughs> it's it, Who was saying this? I think Skip Bayless was even saying it was just like, 
it's almost like his second chapter could have been greater than his first chapter. You know what I mean? Could have been. Yeah. Could have been. And that was like potential you'll never see. And it's also like that goes with his daughter too. You're just like, here's what's interesting to me about the about what Kobe was doing with women's basketball and like and him being friends with Sabrina Ionescu of of Oregon and like and he was you know going to all these NBA games obviously because his daughter was a fan of the game. True. And she was just like, I'm gonna attack that league. But when he came out a couple weeks ago and was saying that I think these girls could play in the league. I think he was paving the way for his daughter to be the first woman to play in the league. And he was really in petition for it that I feel like. You know, uh, there we will, don't know, obviously. I'm yeah. saying like that's I'm just saying that I mean looking at it now, obviously speculation is it's 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 not fun, but it's just like you can look at it now, you're like, God, that's I think that's what he was doing for it, you know what I mean? Well, like uh, by all accounts there's a Zach Lowe put out a piece mm-hmm. talking just a little retrospective on Kobe and saying that he met with him a long time ago, and Kobe was already laying the groundwork for deer basketball and for, uh, you know, uh, what was it, Muse Cage, right? And whatever the other one uh, right. that he was doing, it just like he was asking him, and how do you get to this? And talking about, you know, the the fact that the discussion of basketball is not about the nuance of this guy's footwork or why you run a screen roll in this situation, et cetera, like the you know the minutia, the nuts and bolts of it. It's just about the broader. He scored this or got a triple right. double. He's like, I want to get back into this. And this was a decade before he did it. So you're probably right. Wow. A that decade before? Something along those lines. I have to check the timeline, but it was long before Deer Basketball. You know, Karan Butler said something similar to that, too. Like, they, he said there was a, uh, a night or two they just kind of stayed up when they were talking about their second half of their, like, you know, when they when they retire. Mm-hmm. And Cubby was talking about those things. So you're right. Like, yeah, that, that's, I didn't, that's crazy. Yeah. But I mean, your you know, yeah. idea that he's potentially projecting, you know, his daughter getting a shot in the league. Yeah, I could see him. Yeah, I trying mean, to lay the groundwork because he's never been that guy to been like th- th- this is like that's that seemed weird to me that like, he was coming out being like these girls can play in the league. You know, it's like I think this one, this one, this one, this one right here. And then uh, then I'm thinking like, why is he saying all that? I'm like, oh right, the daughter who's like who's like training to be just like him. Like obviously his ego and probably hers. You know, we're like, yeah, I think we want to go to the league, dude. I mean, yeah. If you get a shot, yeah, take the shot. Yeah, I and mean, and she could ball. <laughs> I mean, she had, for like a 12, 13 year old, she was like, she was dominating. Look like, 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 like Lamelo Ball. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and I'm I'm guessing she towers over a lot of the kids that she plays with. Sure. I mean, there's 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 those tall white girls out there in Orange County, Thousand Oaks. <laughs> yeah, you know? Thousand Oaks. Well, I know that like she was scheduled to play Jason Terry's daughter. Oh, this really? Week. Yeah. Wow, and I think T Max daughter plays against her, and maybe see some... that's cool. That well, was cool. Yeah, yeah, uh, just over and over. I mean, but looking back over Kobe's legacy, so I was never a Kobe fan, right? Until now, the, why? Uh, because I I thought he suffered from too much of the mentality of I need to be Jordan, but then Jordan learned I need to pass mm-hmm. if I want to win championships. So I just thought you need to learn that second lesson that Phil taught Michael. Just eventually, you have to rely on these people because nobody's going to win this on their own. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're watching Kobe, he's like, you have all this, but you have too much of the. It, I have to be the one that shoots. Right. And sometimes, you know, look at Kyrie. Just like uh, last year in the playoffs, when he missed almost every shot in that game, or whatever it was, they ended up losing the series. And Porter's asked him, "Do you think you should trail back?" He's like, "No, I think I need to shoot more." Actually, and you're like, "Dude, you, <laughs> you had a piss poor shooting game." Right. Uh, but then, so I'm a hypocrite in that then when he was having the, the turmoil with the Lakers and he was starting to demand trades and his two prime destinations were the Clippers and the Bulls. And suddenly yeah. I was like, yeah. you know, this Kobe guy, it's not so bad. And maybe, maybe we can teach him how to pass. <laughs> so what though? <laughs> hey, well, I know. Well, then they were talking about the trades of what they'd have to give up. Yeah. And Kobe Nix did because we would have to give, he wanted to play with Luau and a couple of the guys. Yeah. And it was before we had, you know, the, the, the young, the baby bulls that we ended up making some, you know, right. decent pushes yeah, with. The Rose years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I agreed with them. I was like, dude, if they trade Ding and a couple of the other pieces, well, then what's the point of you coming to Chicago? Yeah, it's going to be another Lakers thing where you're just yeah, like scoring is. 82 points. But they're meaningless. Right. But Jerry West, uh, it was yesterday, was quoted as saying that basically he was inches away from going to the Clippers. Inches away. Wait, he was going to go to the other locker room? Yes. Really? He was inches. He, was, he, he had a talk with Kobe. Oh, and he's, he's going to stay in L.A. but go to the Clippers? Oh, that would have been sinister. Uh, it's Kobe. That would have been so Kobe. 
Uh, can you imagine? That would have been awesome, actually. Well, he could have elevated the Clippers. hundred percent could have. Yeah. Yeah, because he is Kobe. So would have was... stayed in L.A. I didn't even. Uh, that's and that's perfect. Well, I knew at the time, but I thought it was just BS. Like, why would you yeah, go nobody, to the Clippers? Yeah, to Donald. Yeah. It doesn't Donald, make any yeah, sense. Donald Sterling doesn't. Yeah. But then the West was like, I've never told anybody this, but you know, that was almost a done deal. I mean, yeah, because yeah, the Clippers had everybody. I mean, like, they were a farm club. You know what I mean? You can get every, it's just lottery pick central, you know? Yeah. Like, who do you want? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were just a wasteland and they had been for a long, long yeah, time. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, I want, El, I want Elton Brand or Corey McGetty. Like, you can get anybody there. Like, they had so many great guys. Darius Miles, yeah. I get that. That's that's crazy. Um, here's my, here was my quote-unquote beef with Kobe. It was, uh, I was a Laker fan, you know, since I was born. I was born right next to the forum, like in Inglewood in that area. Um, raised out there for a little bit, and then just my dad. Like when I remember I was born, my dad. Like he, like my mom told me, she's like, yeah. He's like, oh, I got, I got, a, I got a Kareem. His favorite player is Kareem. You know what I mean? Those old, old heads love Kareem. Sure. You know, it's hard not to. He's their favorite Laker, right? I, I even told my dad, I was just like, man, now like Magic is like you know the greatest Laker alive right now, and he's just like, excuse you, Kareem. And I was like, damn, okay. <laughs> they it's still a, yeah. love him. It's it's hard. I don't even know how you make that. You can't make the argument. He's the best. I you, mean, like he's he lived by all the hype. Well, uh, you could put the rest of the league versus the Lakers' best five of all time, and that's an interesting game. Right. Pick your top five. So you got, like, Jordan, LeBron. Jordan, Bird, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim Duncan, whatever else. And be like, okay, well, you got uh, Kobe, Magic, Shaq, Wilt, Kareem, Jerry, Jerry West, West. Yeah. Oscar Robinson. Yeah. Uh, who's in there? I mean, who, yeah, there's, there's other they, guys, too. Yeah, Elgin Baylor was there for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You go to the bench. You know, we got James Worthy on yeah, the bench. Michael Cooper. Yeah. Michael yeah. Thompson. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's so many guys. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. And I don't even know who the best, like, I, I, my affinity is the Magic. But that Same. was... I, I was a magic guy. Yeah. I, I was still I was still too young for magic. But I mean, like I was a magic guy going into the '90s, and then you know, because I'm, I'm a, I was a Laker kid, and I was a Laker fan, and then seeing you know the the passing the torch to Jordan take over, right? Mm-hmm. So then it was just was no relevance. But I love the team still. I mean, I, I I was a big Nick Van Exel, Sedell Three. I mean, Elgin Campbell, Vladdy Divas. When we traded Vladdy Divas for Kobe Bryant, that hurt Los Angeles. It did. I don't know how many people because that's when the Kobe fans came. Right, I, sure. I, I like that you just dis, you discern that you're saying like that's when it, it was it was Kobe fans versus Laker fans, and it was a hard bandwagon, dude. Because then Shaq came the next year, and it was just like, what is this? Yeah. This is this is Yankees Lakers bullshit. Well, it's, it's LeBron. Yeah, you know now. Yeah, it's like you loved Eddie Jones, but then it's like you're not really going to see too much progression from Eddie Jones because now you got this kid Kobe. You know what I mean? And you're just like, I don't like this cocky bullshit. He took Brandy to the prom. Who is this kid? <laughs> And anyway, yeah. and I was an Allen Iverson guy, you know what I mean, in that draft. I was like, that's my guy. I was Allen Iverson all the way, you know. Okay. But I'm a Laker fan. Um, and then we, they started dominating. They got Phil Jackson. It was just like, it was just a weird, because nobody was a Laker fan in the 90s. All of a sudden, like, no. late 90s, all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, we were fans the whole time. And it was just like, that sucks, dude. That, su- that sucks you guys are yeah. here because you guys aren't real fans. And you could feel it. It was just, it wasn't, they weren't the same people. I, I'll do the same thing. You know, hopefully one day when the Bulls are relevant again. <laughs> you be like, really? Where were you, you through you? all these yeah. f- terrible coaches and weird lineups yeah. and bad draft picks and good draft picks? But but here's the great thing about Kobe being Bryant. As much as a, if, if you were a fan of basketball and you may not have liked him through maybe his coming up in his formidable years, his formative years right? And then he gets rid of Shaq, right? It's mm-hmm. like it's between him and Shaq. They keep Kobe, gets rid of Shaq, and you're just like, and if you're a Laker fan, I feel like you're a Shaq guy, you know? Okay. You're just like, love Shaq, you know? Well, you're, he's lovable. Yeah. And Especially he, at that and time. Still, you probably still squeeze probably two more championships out of that guy because he was still dominant at that time, right, in 2004. Yeah. So you're just like, God, we're going to keep this guy, and we're going to keep well, this ball kept, hog. He kept showing up out of shape. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, you don't yeah. pay me in the offseason and be like, I'm pretty sure that contract is year-round, buddy. Bro, you're a millionaire. Like, yeah. Please. <laughs> Pretty yeah, sure. so it just kind of was like, all right. When I said I had to be a fan, I had to be a fan of this team with this dude that I'm just like, I'm not a big basketball fan of. And then Paul, and like, and then they couldn't get anybody there, right? And so yeah. then it's just like Kobe's going this fucking scoring feast, you know, for yeah. like for three years. And then Paul Gasol gets there, and that's when he learns, oh wait, I have to have a team, and I have to be able to like. Exactly. I, it feels like he went through this exile those three years. Like when he got rid of Shaq, it was like, I need a guy. You have you know, to you, have. I need a guy. Yeah, you just do. And then the Lamar Odom and the Paul Gasol thing, it just worked. And then I saw the greatness that was Kobe because like he overcame all of it. And then that's when I liked it. And I liked him. I can 
He made me respect him. That's what I thought. It's, that's what it felt like. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. My, I guess, grudging respect, admiration, and you know, deep-seated enjoyment of watching Kobe yeah. stems from the 2008 Olympics when we're up against Spain and you have a court full of, of alphas of famers, on yeah. the American <laughs> side yeah. and they're all deferring to Kobe. And me as somebody, I was watching it, uh, I want to say we were at the brew house watching that, you know, Across after in La Jolla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, uh, down in San Diego. Uh, that's where Brian and I met and, uh, watching the game, but they just kept deferring to Kobe and I was watching going, yes, he's the only one <laughs> that has the stones in this moment to not shy away. Right. And he kept, he, you know, got a couple assists. I know there was a dunk, uh, for Dwight Howard. There was often assist to Kobe. I think a three point shot and assist to Kobe mm-hmm. made a couple shots, like jab stepping, uh, you know, Fernandez to right. say, well, what are, we, what are you going to do? You're going to buy my drive? And then boom, shoot a three in his eye. And just like, yes, let's please keep feeding the ball to Kobe and let's yeah. have the offense run through him. Right. Because everybody else is happy to do it. That's fine. And he is more than willing to pass right now. Right. So this is great. This is the Kobe. I he would love to have this he, guy on my team. And that's what it, I didn't tell you. It was like, it was that 2007, 2008 season. You're right. The Olympics. And then it's like they play the, uh, they play the, uh, the Celtics and lose. It mm-hmm. was like, it, it was this new legend of Kobe, and you're just like, I like this Kobe. I like this is the shit I'm talking about. You yeah. know what I mean? Like this is that's that hard work he was talking about being the greatest. Like now, prove it, motherfucker. And then he did over and over and over. It again. was it was incredible. He was he's the greatest scoring guard I've ever seen. For pure yeah, just for stones. Yeah, there are shots sometimes you're like, this is a brutal shot. Even yeah. I don't give you know shit how good you are, and then he'll make it. Yeah. Now he's got a bunch of those. You can watch clips of the misses as well in those clutch oh, shots. Yeah. But he's got. There's no way you shoot that many and don't miss some. Right. It's inevitable. Yeah. Uh, but he's given the monster, lineups, though. yeah, yeah it, th- that's who I want shooting. Yeah. He's like a basketball Tony Robbins too, in, in like in a weird villainous way because it's. I mean, I, you, all the stories you're hearing now, well, like you know, all all of the stories. You know, I remember uh, Dwight Howard was even saying he's like. Yeah, I was uh, I was telling Kobe one time. He's like, I was like, oh, I get I get afraid to shoot free throws. You know, like, what if I miss? And Kobe's like, shoot a thousand free throws every day. Yeah. Then you know what the failure's like. Then you won't be you won't be afraid anymore. True. <laughs> it's just like, well, that's all right, man. The horseshit of so. Anytime someone gives themselves a, a nickname, mm-hmm. I think it's the worst thing in totally. the entire world. Yeah. It's just the absolute worst. And for some reason. Well, once he ditched the black mamba, the black part, and just went by mamba, yeah. basically, and it was like mamba mentality and all that, yeah. I fully bought in. But mamba mentality, I think, was evidenced by, so out, coming out of the Olympics, you could see genuine growth from CP3, LeBron, D. Wade, right. Chris Bosh, like all these guys, Carmelo coming back in the league, they made huge leaps the next like two years because they're showing up to practice and Kobe, or they show up to morning meetings mm-hmm. and Kobe walks in full sweat and he's like, yeah, I was shooting from 5 a.m. Yeah. Where have you guys been? And I heard like, yeah, they all started doing it. Yeah, they and all joined like, him on is, it. Yeah, that's that, that's badass. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of older Kobe. And then like, yeah, going into like, you know, his the twilight of his career and then like, you know, his 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 second career basically. And you just like, you just dug the guy. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. he's well-spoken. He could speak seven languages and it was... He yeah. was he was great at articulating uh, thought and uh, and just like and, and storytelling about you know about his love and about you know his family and, and obviously the stories he was trying to tell it was just it was it was well done. I know it, it, everything that he touched. He somewhat had the Midas touch, like his yeah. business investments, whatever that drink company he invested right. like six million is now yeah. worth two hundred million, something ridiculous. Nuts. Yeah, and he had. He, that with the Oscar and the who knows the Mamba Academy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mamba Academy. Who who knows what the future would have pretended had he managed to un, you know not meet an unfortunate demise in in Calabasas? Yeah, dude. Just I mean, just brutal. Now, do you think a lot of people are floating all kinds of ideas mm-hmm. to honor Kobe? Um, I like you one like the of logo them. one. Do no, like... I don't like the logo. Okay, one. now why don't you like the logo one? Because uh, to me, the Jerry West one now is just kind of perfect. Mm-hmm. Even though West has never liked being the logo, he's always said, like, choose someone else. Um, but I think there's also a knee jerk reaction to someone pass. So if Jordan passed tomorrow, would we want to change the logo to Jordan? Yeah. And if LeBron passed, you know, in, in five years, are we just going to have this rotating door of. It's been him here's, for so long. Here's what I'm saying. And I, and I, I understand what everybody's. Well, everybody's like, you know, the, the whole knee-jerk reaction. I'm like, it's this generation basically being like, come on, this is, it's like, stop it. Honor the greats by, by having 
the logo be the logo. That's what it's supposed to be. We can honor him yeah. some other way because honestly, there's such a complicated relationship with Kobe and the NBA anyway, and, and, exactly. and, and just like your love and admiration for him, it was like he couldn't get anybody to come to LA. They had to trade for guys. Paul Gasol didn't come to LA. Lamar no. didn't come to LA. Nobody was trying to come to LA. Especially even after he won the championship. So he's trying to come to LA. So don't give me this now of like, he was the dude, he was the best. We got to give him the logo because it's like, don't. But like, how, do, how do you give the logo to somebody that has the unfortunate stain in his past in Colorado? A hunt, dude, exactly. So now you're going to associate the league with that forever? Like Jerry West doesn't yeah. have that. And yeah. he's managed to stay relevant in basketball for decades and yeah. create the Golden State Warriors dynasty. Yeah, and, and now, now the they Clippers. Can, yeah, yeah, now the Clippers. And, and, just, and the old Lakers. And I mean, yeah, and, the, and the Grizzlies for a little yeah. bit when they were nice. Now, if, if you know, if, if there comes a time when one of these other, you know, individuals, they want to change it to somebody that doesn't have an uncheckered past. And, okay. Yeah, and update the logo. I mean, it's the logo. It man. is the logo. It's just the logo. Like, let it go. It's perfect. Yeah. It Baseball really is. is some generic dude at a batting stance. Right. The NFL is, you know, generic. Right, yeah. Whereas b- basketball is like, that's Jerry West. That's awesome. It's a simple silhouette. Right. Uh, they could have made it a Kareem Skyhook back in the day. Totally could have, by the way. Didn't do it. Yeah, exactly. This looks smoother. Like, let it, let it, let them have it. Yeah, hey, exactly. You really want Kobe to be the logo? Like, get the fuck out of here, everybody. What I'm about uh, retiring the jersey? Eight and or 24. Again, that's what I'm. I don't know, man. It's. I mean, Barry Bonds has the most homers in history. Are you going to retire his number league wide? If if they didn't retire Jordans to me, then why? Because Kobe Patton. Look, it, but and, and Kobe's a. I'm not saying he's yeah. not deserving of it, but that's you know what the hell do the Charlotte Hornets have to retire eight and twenty four for? Right, right, because it's Kobe or right. OKC or any other yeah. team. Or if they they expand and they have two new teams in Seattle and yeah. in Vegas, they instantly have to retire those two numbers. Like, yeah, because it wasn't like. Kobe changed the game. He he modeled his, his image as like being a dominating guard. Like there was only one dominating guard before him, which was Michael Jordan. So I mean, he's he's molding an image of somebody else. You know, I I I don't know. That that's weird to me. To, to he didn't break any barriers. You know what I mean? Like that. Like, he's not Jackie Robinson. I mean, for a lot of players, they're they're you know they claim and rightly so. Yeah. It's their opinion saying he was their Jordan. They grew up, sure, learned yeah. love of the game from watching Kobe, yeah. and I agree with that 100%. I just don't know if league-wide – I'm not for retiring league-wide numbers for anybody. Yeah. And I, mean, l- I mean, unless it's like – it's got to be like crazy major. Like, again, yeah. like, unless you, you Jackie broke Robinson. the color barrier. Yes. Yeah, come on, yeah. That is massive. Totally yeah. understand. 42, off. Right. Uh, beyond that, like, uh, you know, I think it's team by team. If you want to retire, go ahead. But yeah. by edict of league – Nah, that seems... He's a great player. He's a great he player. One if, of the all-time if, yeah, greats. Yeah, all-time greats. I, I mean, if they want to do one of them, fine. I mean, whatever. Uh, <laughs> what about the one that I do like at the All-Star game? Like, one side wears eight, and the other side wears 24. I totally dig that. That's easy. That's, yeah. that's where you're supposed to do it. Exactly. Let it happen like that. That, to me, when I read that one, I was like, that's a good one. That's a great way to honor him, considering he was, what, 15-time All-Star, right. started... Like 12 or 11 of those. I don't know. Uh, anyway, LeBron is now going to pass him this year for the most starts. But it's like a crazy, he was the number yeah. one leader. And so, yeah. there's a great place. It's four time. Before that. Yeah. yeah. He's a four time All Star MVP. He's like, that's a great way to go. time All Star, yeah. Yeah, we can go through like just looking at his list of achievements. To me, the most impressive is all the all defensive teams. Yeah, he's yeah he's he yeah he's one of the greatest two way players in the history of the game. It's like, and you don't really think about that. Yeah, it's it's tougher in this day and age for somebody to get the acclaim on both sides. But he right. was first team almost ten times. I think it was like nine times. That's and you know you were still in the the hunt for scoring champ. Right, and you're still in the hunt for championships and all that, and you're putting in the effort on both. He sides. He wanted it all. I, I look him. I look at him more like Bobby Fischer. I mean, he was just such a he was he was a, a pro's kid, but he also really wanted to master the game. That was his whole thing. Of like I wanted to master this game. And he was really good at it. I mean, like, he was always studying it. I guess he was looking at film from, like, the age of six years old. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he's he's always just been the savant for basketball. So, I mean, and he got it. I mean, he's he's on the Mount Rushmore. He's he's there. Um, so put him there. I, I, I don't know about I, I don't know about retiring things or – just because that, that Colorado thing is murky, man. I mean, that whole state still doesn't like him. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a weird, and, yeah. like, yes, the case got dismissed because she didn't want to show up to court. 
Right. But the her statement, I believe at the time, was, you know, basically the prosecutors keep screwing this up. Mm-hmm. They released her name to the public when it was supposed to stay anonymous. Right. They'd screwed up a few other things and like, I don't want to go through this. Yeah. I'm I'm tired. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, that's how the case went out. It wasn't an absolution. They still had a civil case that they they settled. Ex- that's, yeah, that's another thing. It's just like, I mean, they did settle out of court. It wasn't like he was saying, no, yeah. I didn't do this. Exactly. It's not an you admission I mean? of guilt, yeah, exactly. but it's not yeah. a not admission of right. guilt. Uh, and then he put out a you know statement afterwards saying, you know, looking back, I felt that it was a you know uh, an agreement between the two of us, like we were both on board. And I you know looking back, apparently you weren't, and I'm regretful of that type of thing. Yeah, but honestly, and, and that's another great that's great. But that's another wild thing about his journey, and I guess like us growing up with him was that he he that was a redemption story of his. Like he really remade his image after that. I mean, he got dropped by everybody. Except Nike, which is weird, but <laughs> mm-hmm. but he like, he did re he reshaped his image and people started to love him again, you know. Because that's they, the most impressive and, thing, right? That's what he I, went from. I haven't seen that since. I mean, like I guess Michael Vick now, but it's like from a rape case. I mean, that's that's a tough yeah. sled, dude. To become so beloved, though, Michael Vick's nowhere near. Yeah. Right, Michael Vick, yeah. God, I can't even say that. <laughs> Ka- <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, Catherine asked me. She was like, "Was Kobe like well liked?" And I was like, honestly, he was easily the most hateable player if you weren't a Laker fan yeah. until the tail end of his career. And he just managed to kind of do a PR spin and get all of us to go. Incredible. It was flat out incredible. Incredible, dude. He went from easily, it was like, I don't like Kobe. Yeah. I understand all his greatness. And trust me, I enjoy watching it, but mm-hmm. I still don't like the guy. And by the last couple of years, it was like, well, this contract is ridiculous. Yeah. But I totally understand what the Lakers are doing. He yeah. sells tickets. You got a he TV every, deal. Yeah, yeah, he brought you back from Michael, Michael, I'm sorry, Magic Johnson's HIV announcement. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You got five chips with him. Yeah. He is the legacy. He is helping cement the Lakers as the greatest yeah. organization in out, NBA history. Do your thing. Red right. carpet it. Hollywood it out. Yeah, he's worth whatever mm-hmm. he's you willing to pay him. I yeah, totally... they, were, they were right. And everything they did, actually, they were right. Mm-hmm. I think we were wrong. I, he was right. You know, those three years were tough, though, dude. Jesus, without I mean, when nobody wanted to come, Shaq was gone. Then Shaq won. Kobe had my ass taste. I mean, it was like that was a rough stretch. That was the, the Steve Nash MVP years. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a weird time in basketball. The Spurs were all the champions every year. It was boring. You know what I mean? Well, because those games, those series, it's like them versus the Pistons. Great. Yeah. Two teams that don't score. <laughs> just play defense, yeah. Yeah. And just like these are ridiculously low scoring games. Yeah. How is this fun for anybody? Yeah. yeah NBA hated it. So, yeah. yeah. NBA yeah, also they... loved that Kobe and then the Celtics, you know, obviously without created the super team thing. So they just, yeah, they needed that. And then LA needed that. So, yeah, his. Uh, his redemption story is is incredible, and I think that's what makes you like the twilight of his career, and then his his, his second career. You're just like, I like this guy. I know. I, I like what this guy's about. What was I? I was wrong about this guy. That's what you felt like. And then when he, and then when that happens, and you hear all the stories, you're just like, Jesus, dude. Like, <clears throat> I'm I, again, like I wasn't like a major fan, but I do love LA, and I I, I do love that Laker team. Uh, and it's just, it was hard to not cry. It was weird to me crying after like the second day. I was like, how am I still crying about this? Oh, really? You, I, I didn't actually tear up, yeah. but I was shell shocked just kind of sitting there going, yeah. how Kobe's not gone. Like, yeah. This doesn't, this isn't real. Yeah. Those guys are immortal, right? That's what you feel like. You're like, and it makes you, it's like, oh, if that guy can go, I don't have a chance. Yeah. We're the same age. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a chance. Yeah. And they take care of those guys. Like it doesn't like that. Those guys are taken care of by like these kind of things. These kinds of instances. It should be. Yeah. Yeah. It's just. It's that's why it's so weird. You're just like, whoa. Those guys are immortal, and now they're that, that makes him mortal. And the impact I felt just beyond. So I left my house. I went to the grocery that day, and I went and saw a movie, and I was somewhere else, and I saw Kobe jerseys everywhere, just flat out everywhere. And then you drive past downtown, and a bunch of buildings are lit up in purple wow. and gold. I haven't been down to Staples yet to see any kind of the memorial. I yeah. want to and don't. Really? I I, I don't I don't know. It just is to yeah. to just kind of like soak it all in. Mm-hmm. Of uh, this is a, a unfortunately massive moment for the NBA. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is one of the echelons, you yeah. know, stars gone well before. You ever anticipated. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I figured he was going to live to like 95. Right? Just 
flat out. Like he still retired looking three good. years ago. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the Dr. J of once a year, I still dunk to make sure I can. Right. Doing that till like his old old age, mm-hmm. like Jordan still taking on current players in practice. Right. Exactly. Like yeah. Showing up to places. Doing the runs in the off season when everybody comes to LA yeah. and doing the pickup games, still showing up, and you yeah. hear stories of like, dude, he showed up and he just fucking dominated yeah. John Morant. Still got it. Yeah, he still yeah. got it. Just like whoever the next young bucks coming up. Um, yeah, it's really sad, man. Yeah, the outpouring from all the other uh, players has been uh, impressive. Like, yeah, because I, you know, I, we're, we're we're similarly close in age, right? We're like what five or six years apart, something like that. So it's like I, I know you're you're up in like the Jordan era, and I love the Jordan era because I'm like I'm a, I'm a kid kid when that's happening, and then you know I'm I think I'm in my twenties or like you know late teens when like when Kobe and Lakers start dominating in the in the two thousands, early two thousands, and then in the late two thousands, uh, and. I, I just I don't remember I don't remember anybody being that major of, of like a yeah I, I play basketball because of Kobe I'm trying to be like Kobe you know what I mean it was always like no nah, we're trying to be like Jason Kidd or AI you know what I mean like it's it, it, the the and one mixtape was coming up you know what I mean like yeah I don't remember any of that so now seeing like this younger generation being like no no we're all Kobe guys it's just like when did this happen I don't know and when you, did this happen it's widespread yeah. from guys of his general, like T-Mac talking about, you know, when he came into the league and he reached out to Kobe because he was straight from high school, high school into the yeah. league. And he's a few years behind Kobe, so just trying to, like, understand what this is like to get present-day players. You know, Spencer Dinwiddie was number eight, and he retired, and now he's 26. Right, right, saying, right. All those guys. Kobe was my guy. And you're like, wow, really? You're 26? Yeah, Paul George even says, like, hey, Kobe was my guy. I remember, like, same thing like, last year. It's like... Russ and, and Harden, all those guys are like, they're all Kobe guys. But it's like, I, I, those guys are all from L.A., though, so it's always like, you just, it's it's a weird thing, because like, I mean, they're not like crazy ball hogs, but you're just like, I, they were fans of like, what, this guy just like, never passing the ball? I don't know, or just maybe the balls of him to watch him, he's fearless in the moment and trying See, to... See, that's, I dug that in, in 08... Or um, from the 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 battles they had with the Celtics in the, in the late two thousands, like see, yeah, that's the show I was into. Yeah, I like that. You know, it's that early stuff. It was like, I, I mean, I was a, I was a, you know, you're a Shaq guy. You love Shaq. It was hard not to, and it, Shaq was one of the most dominating presences the NBA's ever seen. Ever seen? He changed so, the game. <laughs> yeah. So when Kobe shoots, like, yeah, you should shoot, but at the same time, you should be really trying to find Shaq in his spots. Because right. Nobody can stop him. He gets fouled on every play yeah. because he's unstoppable. Yeah. So just keep. No, you want to get sixty because you know you can get sixty. It's yeah. Just like, yeah. But if you want to win a championship, right? At your young age, you need to feed Shaq the ball. Right. But yeah, it's, it's just, it gave those kids the mentality, just like, no, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna go score every time I can because Kobe does that. I'm just like, I don't know. If that's I mean, I don't like AI. Come on, shake somebody, pass the ball off, or you know, go in there and get smacked on the ground or something. You know, like that's I like that stuff. But, yeah. You know, I was uh, to see. I've seen numerous uh, players' accounts and all that, and Shaq was talking about what hurts the most is the fact that, you know, his Hall of Fame was coming up, and, and yeah. we get to hear his Hall of Fame speech, and we get to keep ribbing each other about who had more championships. Obviously, he mm-hmm. did, and, uh, and you know how many championships they could have won. And then you start thinking about you know the fucking accident itself and how harrowing that must have been. You're like, Jesus, dude. Man. I think, it, yeah. I was I, talking to our buddy Gordon Downs about it. He was a comic down in San Diego, and he was. Yeah, we were just like, I mean, imagine that. You know, it's just like it's foggy. All of a sudden, there's a hill. You're just like, are we going to survive this? And then it's just screaming, and then it's just a ball of fire, and it's, and nobody can get to you, so you're probably just like burning alive. I mean, I just yeah, hopefully it was instantaneous. I mean, I, I don't. I yeah, who knows? Yeah, I mean, the coroner will put out a report eventually. Uh, that's your hope, but I'm, from the the L.A. Times head. Uh, two f- witness accounts and just like it was so thick I don't know how anybody could do it and there was a church right down the mm-hmm. the hill from it and one of the guys at the church or a and gentleman at the church was out front like drinking a cup of coffee and whatnot and he could hear a helicopter kind of sputtering mm-hmm. and then just saw through the fog a big explosion like heard it and just saw a burst of flames just right up the hill from him mm. you know like oh my god how thick you know what was visibility right because it, it wasn't that morning yeah it was a weird morning god it was weird and his flight plan too they left orange county flew to burbank and then cut over to calabasas right because the burbank because they couldn't see so they needed like they needed oh, is that what it was I yeah just... they literally said it was like yeah they needed like more clearance it was something like, i saw on cnn it's like a special aviation kind of thing but it was like he was asking for 
like help to get through like because he couldn't see so he was asking for help from burbank and they kept saying like hey you're too low we can't catch you on our radar oh wow because he was trying to go low because he couldn't see i did i haven't heard that yet. yeah that's brutal yeah dude. i mean i just yeah i i didn't want to speculate what happened <laughs> like how because if the lapd isn't putting their choppers up it's like what makes you guys think you're supposed to be doing it yeah, I don't know. Maybe yeah. just because they've done the flight so many and that's, times. And that's what I'm thinking, too. He's just like, we've done this a million times. It's been foggy before. We'll be fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then yeah. it comes out later that him and Vanessa have a pact that, that the two of them can never be in the helicopter together for these types of situations. Really? Just like the president and vice president can't be in certain right. areas at certain times together because the yeah. government needs to continue on. They had a pact for real? Yes. They're not allowed to ride the helicopter together. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, once you start having kids. He had a plan the whole time. Well, I mean, that one makes sense. I mean, totally. I'm just still like, wow. Yeah. I uh, can't I can't even fathom what all those families are going through today. Yeah. Just a simple helicopter ride, a little half hour jaunt up to Calabasas to Easy. play a basketball and game. And it's like it's fun for the girls. It's like it's fun yeah. for them. It's like parents be like, look what we can do for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, exactly. And they're also like, especially the, the one guy's a... College baseball coach mm -hmm. for Orange County. I mean, yeah, he's like, no, he's like a legend. Yeah. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's a legend at Orange uh, Orange Coast College. Yeah. Okay, and but for him as a sports fan of like, dude, I'm on a helicopter with, with Kobe, Kobe bro. Yeah, I don't give a shit if it's not your sport. Yeah, it's you know, it's, it's one cool. of it'd be, it's cool. It'd be Tom Brady yeah. or Peyton Manning yeah. or you know, pick a baseball or a uh, soccer or yeah. whatever the case is. And if you're a pilot, you're just like, oh my god, Kobe, you know. I'm not gonna say no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, well, I mean, this, I'm gonna figure out a way to get there. This has been his pilot for a long, long time. Oh, really? He's also Kawhi's pilot. Oh man. So, yeah. But it's interesting to see all the how how much of an effect he's had on like people here in the city. And I've gotten texts from individuals that don't live in LA and like, what's mm -hmm. it like, kind of thing. And just, dude, it's you can feel it and you can see it. Going I mean, around. like, I, I wasn't in New York for 9 11, but I mean, this does feel like sports 9 11. I mean, like, that's what it feels like to me. It's like, it, it's heavy. It's yeah. heavy. It's somber. Have you done stand up in a couple days? No. Okay. Is it so, weird? Sunday it wasn't. Uh, Monday it was. Okay. It was like the, there was, you could feel it. It was, it, it, people weren't like ready to laugh, but they were still out there. You know what I mean? And then last night, it just didn't feel good. Something weird. I, I don't know what happened last night. Maybe it's the winds. I know that I've heard people that uh, I didn't perform on 9 11. I performed like a couple nights later. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember it was like, that was weird. Yeah. But last night was weird. The roast battle was weird last night. Okay. Yeah. I know because I, I heard people that have gone like yeah i still did a show on 9 11 out here mm. not in, right, right, not right. in new york but out here and there i've heard a few people say it was one of the best crowds i've ever performed for because they just needed the cathartic release yeah and then it's kind of the shock of the moment and then it begins to set in because then it starts to suck yeah, yeah and in la is a lakers town mm -hmm. uh this town shuts anytime the lakers make any kind of push oh, this dude, town yeah. shuts <laughs> down yeah where there's, there's no crowds you're like i had a I, this show's sweet all the time yeah. it's just like yeah doesn't matter but Look, the Dodgers can be super relevant, and it has a slight impact. Yeah, the the Rams can make the Super Bowl like they did last yeah. year. It has a slight impact. The Lakers have any kind of run. This town shuts down. Shuts down, and it's cool. It's yeah. it's cool. It's cool. It's it's a town that doesn't give uh, a shit about anything gives mm -hmm. a shit about the Lakers. Right, and it's impressive to see. Yeah, and uh, it's also interesting to have someone to see the impact of someone of his caliber because now with social media and everything. These guys are famous on a level that is kind of unfathomable to right. previous generations. Yeah. To where billions of people know who Kobe Bryant is. Right. Billions. In his day. Not, now we all know who Alexander the Great is, all these years later type of thing. Right. So we get the stories <laughs> right. while he's alive and to see his impact. Yeah. Like, I've seen video tributes from AC Milan because he grew up outside of Milan. Yeah, that's another thing, Nost. Like, Italian soccer is like notoriously known for how racist their matches are you know what i mean just like all the fans and to see that many just like you're saying one of the most racist like sporting events in you know and just in the world right now they took a week or at least a day at their super bowl the italian cup to just like be like we love this black guy yeah i, I just thought that was so transcendent and great and i'm just like now put that forward for something else for other black guys why other black guys are just like i hate playing in this league because you guys just keep calling me a monkey or just like keep saying I'm dirty or like this other thing. I had no idea. It was I've, I, I've seen one game. I can yeah. say that. I saw uh, a, yeah. a Torino play Roma. Yeah. But. Uh, oh, yeah. It's 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 bad. 
it's really I mean like from like what you read you're just like this is crazy and then like yeah then to see like well we do love Kobe <laughs> you know what I mean it's well, like I'm not black I'm OJ kind of thing you know eh, I mean I, I guess when you're that specifically talented it transcends it really does yeah and he was such a fan he could speak the language you know what I mean well so, that also endears yeah. you know grew up in Italy for a time right speaks the language his dad played basketball there yeah uh but yeah, and then the uh, Djokovic at the Australian Open. Yeah, that was cool. After he won, he signed the camera's lens. You know, uh, what was it? KB and GG eight twenty four. You know, forever type of thing. Okay, that's cool. And Rafael Nadal, after one of his matches, was talking about Kobe, and the Super Bowl's going to have some sort of tribute to Kobe this weekend. That's how big he is. Like you forgot the Super Bowl was Sunday. Uh, yeah, I it, did. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it's yeah. like oh yeah the Super Bowl kind of thing. It's yeah, because this is like media week, and I, I I completely forgot. I was like oh there's a there's a there's the biggest sporting event and and of, of the years happening this Sunday. Like what? Yeah, it's it's heavy. It's 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 really heavy in Los Angeles. I don't think I've ever felt anything like this energy wise anyway. No. Yeah. No, not because I can't even imagine the caliber of actor celebrity that would have to pass so untimely that would have this resonant effect on LA. I was saying like Brad Pitt maybe at this point. See, but I I don't think so. Not even him. Leo? Not really. No, the, right. the, cuz you have more. It would more, be Kobe. It yeah. really just would be, yeah. Magic? If this happened to Magic instead of him, you know, uh If it happened to Magic in 90 maybe. Yeah, when yeah. he made the announcement about, you know, it being HIV positive. That would have been I I don't even know if we I don't know if LA recovers. Yeah. <laughs> like, honestly. But it, I think it'd have to be a sports star. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't like, Brad Pitt doesn't feel like ours, so to speak. Right. Ours being Los Angeles. Kobe does because, yeah, he was 17. He gets here. Like, they, yeah. LA raised him, really. 20 years mm -hmm. being the face of the marquee franchise. Well, I'd say like seven, what, 14, 15 of those being the actual face? Right, right. Yeah. After Shaq leaves. Yeah. 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 yeah you're right. Man. Being the biggest, you know, the star that brings the stars out to him type of thing. Yeah. And they all are rever reverential of him. They all love him. Yeah, Jack Nicholson loved Kobe. Yeah. M maybe Jack once he passes. Yeah. But it's not like it's prime Jack anymore. So does he have Right. A, it's, it's not going to be. Yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's not too soon. Does the young yeah. generation care? Right. No. But this, but just, yeah, you're right. The young generation cares because, like, they, yeah, they, they were kids when Kobe yeah. was dominating. They just so, had yeah. And all the guys they idolize now are mm -hmm. talking about how amazing he was for the past three yeah. days. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, i never seen it. <laughs> I've I know. never seen it. I, I don't think it's – that'd be like if, like, Tom Brady dies. You know what I mean? I'd be like, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, but I still don't think it's near the effect. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe in Boston, but does it have – like where NBA players and baseball players are now going, oh, Tom Brady, like I learned a lot from him type of thing. Maybe. The guy's won a yeah. crazy number of Super Bowls. TB12, all that stuff, you know. Yeah, he's got the whole training thing, so maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It just because basketball is built on personalities, mm -hmm. we get to know and identify with these individuals more than we do with football or baseball or any other sport here in this country. Right. So to lose those guys I think has more of, a, more of an impact yeah. just because we feel like we know them. Yeah, yeah, man, <laughs> it's so tough. It's I can't even. It's 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 weird to articulate it, like how how tough it is. Uh, it's uh, cause yeah, we weren't close with them, obviously, and then we weren't like obviously big fans of no, of, but it know, still had an effect. It has a crazy effect. Yeah. And, like it makes you really sad. You're just like man, wasted yeah. potential. You're just like, what else was he gonna do? You know, what was she gonna do? You know, it just it makes you just makes you a little sick. Yeah, he could. Uh, I mean. So he's got the Oscar. Then what if he sets a goal of like EGOT and he goes after the Emmy yeah. and the Grammy and the Tony? Yeah. Or he wants to own a football team, or a, or you know, or he wants to like you know create a new league. You know what I mean? Yeah. But so. the sky was kind of the limit. Really was. Uh -huh. like, he was going to do everything. Like yeah, I think he was saying somebody else said I can't. Remember. I'm trying to cite the quote, but somebody was even saying like he was going to have a better second career than Jordan was. You know what I mean? Like, Jordan's always been kind of looking for, you know, what's going to make me as great as, you know, being Michael Jordan, the basketball player, and he hasn't really found it yet, you know, as an owner yeah. and as an entrepreneur, as a business person, that kind of thing, I as mean, a mogul. If the Hornets had, like, a Golden State run, like, he takes over, and then five, six totally. years later, yeah. they make this run and be like, look at this, man. Yeah. His greatness bleeds into... But it hasn't been the case. No, he's not even Mark Cuban at this point. No, he's not even close. You know? So, yeah.
First, yeah, he's one of the worst owners. <laughs> he is. Yeah, they he overpay really for is. some of the shittiest talent. They yeah. draft some of the weirdest guys that I Bobby don't understand Brown. the fit. Yeah. Yeah, but then, like, you know, turning down all the picks to take Frank Comiskey when the Celtics wanted to move up to get Justice Winslow. He's like, I think you turned down seven picks. Yeah. Like, that's Frank ridiculous. Comiskey, yeah. yeah. Is, is he on the Suns now? Yes, he is. Jesus. Come but on, it's, Jordan. it's been one after another after another yeah, with that roster. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gemma Walker has never never had a good teammate. No. Malik Monk is starting to, starting to turn a little bit, maybe? Is it? Okay. I don't know. I don't know. What's Devontae Graham has been right. the most interesting crazy? homegrown product. Yeah, uh, that's I never I didn't I did not think he'd bud like this. That's crazy. I, no doing. one, no one did outside of Graham's family. Right, <laughs> and maybe yeah, Kansas. Yeah, yeah. a coach he had. Uh, right. you know, here or there. We always knew. You're just like, really? You yeah. knew that? He went undrafted, didn't he? I think so. I think he might have even been a G League guy. I have to look it up. That's crazy. Yeah, he's just good. And some people are like, you know, maybe he puts up another year like this or two years. He's an all star. Like, yeah, it seems if you can maintain these numbers, it's, it's borderline possible. Mm. Kansas yeah. guys do that. Kansas guys don't really, they don't really flourish. I mean, with the exception of Paul Pierce. Yeah, and, well, Embiid, whether or not he does. Right. But right, like right. Macklemore, no. No. No, not at all. You know, Macklemore, it's like, I mean, Heinrich had a career. The Morris brothers. Yeah, Jacques Vaughn. <laughs> Jacques Vaughn. There's a name I haven't thought about in a long, long time. I love Jacques Vaughn. Oh, Danny Manning, right? Wasn't he a Kansas guy? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Danny May, Ray full of friends. Yeah, but it's not like it's an Mm-mm. all-timer. You know? No. Go look at Kentucky. Go look at UNC. Go look at Duke. Yeah. It's like they could put together monster rosters, especially yeah. Kentucky. Or just be a kid born in California. I mean, like, those kids seem to flourish. Hey, we got good basketball weather. I mean, it's great. I, I love it. You know, it's like it's Paul George, it's Kawhi Leonard, it's Russell Westbrook, it's James Harden. It's like it's all of them. It's all your favorite guys, with the exception of LeBron. Uh, yeah, Dames from Oakland. Dames from yeah, Dames from California. Uh, Clay Thompson's from California. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, California could lay claim to yeah. you know right now it's the most fruitful state for NBA basketball players. Yeah. So, what do you think? My one of my thoughts, uh, like after you know soaking this in for a day, is hmm. I. I wonder what the odds are for the Lakers winning championship because this seems like perfect right, motivation. Right? Yeah. It's like they were already going, you know what? But now it's like, dude, we're doing this for Kobe. I bet they won the whole thing. Right. It seems kind of it's just, yeah, it feel and they're gonna have extra motivation. Yeah. And if anything's gonna add to Kobe's legacy more posthumously, it's bu- bu- wow, Kobe yeah. managed to do it again. Yeah, and they give him like a ring. I bet. You know, oh, yeah. you know, like Vanessa. You yeah. Know what I mean? If yeah. they won a championship, 100% they give him a ring. They yeah. give a ring to her and all the all daughters. The, yeah. And everybody gets a ring. Like, great. That'd be great. I hope yeah. they do it. But I wonder if their Vegas odds shifted. I just thought about it like yesterday or something. Like, I wonder. Uh, have you looked? No, I haven't. Because okay. they already have to be. It's them and the Clippers. It's, they, well, it's them and the Bucks, right? I think the last I saw the odds were Lakers one, Clippers two, Bucks three. Okay. Type of thing. Okay. Even yeah, though right yeah, now, now the Bucks are historic, like, uh, right? Yeah, now I, I gotta say, I gotta think it's it's Lakers and that Bucks team. I mean, if if Middleton can get fifty one points, I mean, I yeah, you can do that. All right, yeah, you guys yeah. are better than I thought you were. Then yeah, uh, like I knew he was good. I didn't know. He, I mean, like fifty one points, good. Jesus, Middleton. I it'll come down to the playoffs because last year he was so up and down. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like Siakam. He'll give you thirty. He'll give you nine. Right, you th- and especially. Like, he was great against the Celtics, but then just, you know, average against other teams mm-hmm. kind of thing. So right, can he be, when they deed him up, yeah. Yeah, can you be consistently, can you get me 20 and 8 yeah. night and night out so Giannis isn't just completely double and triple teamed? How's their defense? Uh, historically good. Their point differential is historically good. Okay. Uh, right now, if they end of the season, I they may have the best point differential of all time. Okay. It's like 11 points last time. Who's your X Factor? Is it, is it is the, uh, Bledsoe? Yeah, I mean, you could say, are you going to get something from Bledsoe? Is Lopez going to be able to hit enough threes to justify him I'm being the giving, stretch? Yeah, yeah, it's not Lopez. Yeah, is you know, is the loss of Brogdon? That's what ultimately I feel like. yeah. that, that to me was like you need to in the keep playoffs. Him. That's going to be tough. Should be. Yeah, but right now, who's the star at George Hill? Is it George Hill and Bledsoe? Uh, yeah, they get what Kanaten, Divincenzo. Um, you know, it's an interesting team of. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like uh, Toronto last year. You right, got an alpha, okay. 
you got to you know you got another all star with you Lowry to Middleton, right. and then a bunch of guys. Can they all step up? In essence, and they if, add any, yeah. Who else do they add? Nobody really. Nobody. Second the, second Lopez brother. I mean, they'll be active right, in, right, at right. trade deadline, Some, yeah, who, which yeah. is very shortly coming it's up. Like in a week or two, right? Yeah, it's the beginning of February, um, and we're at the 29th right now, so it's coming up quick. Yeah, and Iguodala is just like. Being like a media gadfly right now, like he's just out there, like just being like a pundit. Look, Memphis is sitting at eighth, and you're not willing to play. Look, yeah. they don't have championship aspirations. They don't. I understand that, but you could have been playing this whole time, and they'll yeah. still trade you. Yeah, you could still demand a trade and be like, "Listen, I'll help." Well, then he can get hurt, and he's probably you know, he's like he's been time with his wife. Yeah, I mean, he's doing his thing. Yeah, I, I I'm yeah, not. He, he wants to be in L.A. He's like, by the way, another L.A. guy. Yeah, <laughs> you could all uh, Gilbert Arenas. Yeah. Yeah, the Clippers have all the pieces in the world to make a move, so they more than likely will if an opportunity arises. Lakers don't have squat. Yeah, I get anything. So they want... But they but they said they, they get everything. They said they're good. Well, they're going after... Who is it? There's a point guard. Collison? Yes. Nick... Uh, yeah, Darren yeah. Collison. Darren right? Collison. I almost said Nick Collison. And oh, then, no, Kansas guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think OKC, aren't they retiring his number? Didn't they retire his number? Yeah, they retired his number, yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and there was another name that like okay, and if this guy ends up on the buyout market, then the Lakers will end up with the. But that's what they're waiting on. Yeah, this buyout Dar- market. Yeah, right. A Darren Collison, maybe. Yeah. So who the Bucks go after? It'll be interesting hmm. to close out this season. Yeah, I don't know who you get. I mean, there's not a lot of sexy names, out, especially Rodney if, Covington's out there. Is he is he tradable? Covington, sure, mm-hmm. sure. But what does Minnesota want for him? Right. There have been several teams that have, you know, floated wanting mm-hmm. him. Uh so, who knows? Dallas has had interest, but now they've, with Norman Powell going down, not Norman Powell, yeah. uh, oh, uh, see, uh, 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 Powell, it is a Powell. Dwight Powell. Dwight Powell. Yeah, yeah that ruptured, you know, yeah. Achilles. But they want a guy like Collie Stein, which makes sense. Yeah. He, he's a, he's, I mean, they're almost Serviceable. the same player. Yeah. Uh, he'll give you minutes, but will they then still, you know, go after a Covington? I don't know. Uh, it depends on what Is Harrison Barnes get. available? I don't think anybody wants that contract. Right, 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 right. I heard Daniel Russell's available. I'm sure for the right price. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Golden State, you know, if they can flip him, still bottom out, get a top pick, mm-hmm. and maybe turn that top pick into somebody else, because I don't know if they want to take, hey, let's draft somebody, because this draft class, by all accounts, I don't follow college, but isn't going to be a ballyhooed one in 10 years. Oh, this one coming up? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be good. Really, you're the only. All I've heard is there's like three good guys. But I've heard. Uh, okay. Yeah. After that, uh, after that's tough. There's like, but there's there's four or five guys. You're like, okay, these guys. Like that Weissman kid's supposed to be nice. He's seven one. He's gonna be like a. He's got a body like, uh, like Bagley. Okay. Who's the AD light? Somebody's supposed to be AD light, and they're like, it's pretty light on the light at this point. Like coming into the college yeah. basketball season. Oh, like, so you say it's the Antonio Davis draft. No, 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 uh, Anthony Davis. So, yeah, it's, it's like it's like the Anthony Davis like draft. No, 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 it's like he is Anthony Davis light. Oh, James Weissman. That's okay, that's Weissman. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm talking about. So yeah. all I've heard about him is it's a light, light. It's a very light, light. Like he hasn't shown the progress that we would expect. They, they, yeah, well, he's not playing basketball right now. Okay. Once <laughs> again, I know nothing. I know yeah. ball is shut down. Ball's done. There's the other kid. The other kid over there. Um, Isn't there a kid out of Georgia or something? Neck is nice. Yeah, things like yeah, Anthony Edwards. I, that could be his name. I don't know. But yeah, he's he's real nice. He's got a, a hard and light game to him. There's a kid over in uh, Australia too, who's like the number one or number two kid coming out of high school. Uh, R.J. Hampton, I think his name is. Okay. He's he's pretty good. Uh, and that's about yeah. Like those are like the four guys I'm, I'm I really know. Um, all right. Well, maybe if they got the seven footer, that would make sense for Golden State. Right. But I mean, it's also you got me. Oh, then you got Vernon Carey over in uh, a Duke. You know what I mean? So I mean, you got you got some guys. You got a few guys. Uh, but yeah, as far as trade oh, market, I Greg mean, Greg Anthony's kid, Cole Anthony, who's supposed oh, to be really? a okay. monster. Yeah, he's like a, he's like a, an ill combo. He's like a six three combo guard, and he's like he's just he's fierce. Um. So, uh, uh, New Orleans is retacked, and now with yes. Zion coming back, and they're like. Maybe we're not going to trade Drew Holiday and J.J. Redick. Right, because we can make the eighth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we might be able to make And they could. They're not so far out God. that it's not possible. And watching Zion, like— Drew Holiday and the Bucks would be— Pretty sick. 
Stop that. But man. I don't know what you got to give up to get them because I wouldn't right. take Bledsoe back. Yeah. <laughs> but that would be the ideal. Hey, you take Bledsoe. We'll take we, Drew Holiday. Yeah. Right. That'd be fucked. Oh, my God. Drew Holiday. And then we got George Hill backing him up. Mm-hmm. Great. You can uh, run the second unit. No That's problem. That's major. Because he's a, he's a great two-way player. That's what you need, he's, actually. Yeah. You'll get the solid defense. Somebody else that can help on the perimeter. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, another ball handler who is a threat. That would be awesome. What do you got to give up to get him? Oof. I don't know. And then J.J. J.J. would make a great addition on the Lakers. 20 teams. Yeah. Uh, anybody that can curl off a screen. Yeah. And Where's Andre Drummond going? Is he going? Well, they're not, uh, by all accounts, they're not going to give him the max extension that he wants. So, yeah, he's on the chopping block. Him, Reggie Jackson, if anybody's interested. <laughs> we'll give you season tickets. Uh, yeah. Throw it in. Like, what else you want? Aren't they Little Caesars Arena? We'll give take, you a Little Caesars for a year. Take Reggie Jackson off the hands. And if Jeez. anybody wants to touch Blake, like, I think they're in full, you know, yeah, rebuild. rebuild mode. Yeah, I, yeah. What were they thinking? Um, well, they had a brand new stadium that they couldn't sell seats for because they didn't have a big enough face. Oh, at the uh, at in, the palace in Detroit. Yeah, oh, so their yeah. new one downtown. So by trading for Blake, now we have a marketable star. We really need to sell some season tickets, and I think that was the motivation. You got to go draft somebody, dude. You got to go draft. You, yeah. you got to go young. Go get. Yeah, go get Lamelo Ball. Quit messing around. So be crap. Drop to the bottom. Right. Increase your odds. Go get. Yeah, go get one of those kids. Yeah, and build. Uh, I mean, who was the young kid on Detroit that you brought up Saturday? Oh, Svi Mikhailu. There you yeah. go. God, I love that guy. He's, uh, I mean, the I've, L- seen, Lakers I've traded, seen a scant amount of Pistons games. So, I mean, I'm just saying, like, Lakers traded nothing for him. I was upset because, like, I saw what he could do from, like, the three point line. It's just that kid's automatic. And that's year, in like two or three years, you're going to be like, oh, that's the guy you need. You know, yeah. I say, he's a Kyle Korver type. Hey, man, Zubach. Can you yeah. imagine if he had. I got rid of Zubach for nothing. Too. Nothing. I just. Nothing. Was that a Magic or a Palinka thing? Because like, I'm looking at Palinka now. It's like he did some really good GM work in the offseason. But I'm looking at like what happened last year. Like you guys, you guys traded Mike Muscala and and what's the other guy over in? Uh, he's at New York now. Rodney. Uh, uh, Rodney. Yeah. Or Reggie Bullock. I'm sorry. Reggie. Uh, I was Bullock. gonna say because Rod yeah. Hood is the only one I can think of. No, yeah, no, he's out for the season. Yeah, he's done. Uh, Reggie Bullock. Yeah, Reggie Bullock and Mike Muscala. Yeah, because it was a it's so we, dumb. We need Mascala's three point shooting. Yeah, and we his need size. Bullock's. Yeah, and, and Bullock can shoot threes too. So yeah. you're just like, stop it, you guys. Because you're trying to retroactively say, hey, you know what works with yeah. LeBron is surround, surrounding him with shooters. Yeah, right. <laughs> which is LeBron came in saying, I want playmakers. So they went out and they got Lance Stevenson and Rondo, Rondo right. and all these guys that could handle the ball so LeBron didn't have to. And then when you watch the games, LeBron is still like, give me the ball, I'll run the point. Be like, right. What do you want, LeBron? You're saying you don't want to have to be the primary, yeah. but yet the, when you play the game, you're going back to the role that you've been playing for all these. You know, yeah, you're not gonna be, you're not gonna work down. You're not gonna be a four, LeBron. Yeah, you're never gonna be a four. Not not at this stage in your and career. And by the way, I love them making him a, a point guard. I mean, he's like leading the league in assists. It's like I'm almost upset he wasn't doing this from the beginning of his career. Yeah, he's got the court. He's vision. amazing. He's, he's happy amazing to do it. as a point guard, just a strict point guard. Oh, it's stupid. It is, but I mean. It, Lakers championship, if they're not the odds on, man, I, the motivation from you know, Kobe. Though, you know, though, you know it's going to be great. If the Pelicans do get the eighth seed and play Lakers first round, imagine the ratings for that. Well, look, if Zion is back to full health. He will be in April, right? Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. He's slowly. I mean, that block from yeah. game, his second game, he looks fine. He Jeez. looks fine. Hopefully yeah. the, the rejiggering his, his mm-hmm. running – and all that and realigning his physiology works out like it did for Steph Curry and his ankles. Oh yeah. So we right. can yeah, we can have Zion for another 12 14 years mm-hmm. of this apex guy. But Ingram is an all-star. Ingram's great, yeah. He has really finally blossomed into yeah. the guy that everybody assumed. And Ball can shoot now. Ball's playing 36 to de- 38% from the three-point line. That's to a degree that bad. I never thought possible when you watch him fucking shoot. I told you this. It's dude. It's still ugly, yeah. but at least the trigger is faster, and yeah. he's not cocking it from his hip. Uh-uh, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's, it's still it's, weird. It's, yeah, it's it's almost Danny Green, like where it's like up here or something. It's but it's fun. But it's not this weird. I'm, I've got to draw it up. Right. Well, okay. Now you just give the defender way too many opportunities mm-hmm. to swipe the ball away. Right. It's like when people are high on Taco Fall after last year and be like, yeah, but <laughs> every time he collects the ball, he drops it back to his knees. Yeah. He should just turn with it and literally drop it in. Yeah, he's taller and bigger than everybody. Yes, yeah. nobody could stop him. But he kept dropping it down. It's like, that is a fatal flaw. I could get the ball, yeah. and I am tiny compared to this and unathletic <laughs> compared to this man. 
Yeah, they're gonna be great. I I'm, I have a lot of fun watching them. I watched them last night too. I I I got the league pass just to watch them now. Oh really? Well, it's, I mean, illegal stream, but yeah. Zion is that first game, man. Dude, that second game was fun too. It was. Yeah. That first one was like he made a three. Look at that three. It was almost a line drive on the right. first one. <laughs> it, was like, makes, yeah, it was like Sam Perkins like. Yeah. You know what I mean? It makes the second one, and you're like, son of a bitch, go yeah. back down, dude. Get Zion the ball. Yeah. Boom, he gets the third one. It's like this kid is on fire. Seventeen straight points. I don't think I've ever seen that. Uh, that was so much fun. And then they once they it floundered ever so slightly, they're like, all right, we gotta pull you for minutes. Yeah. And you could see the crowd be like, ah. So they could have won that game if he was They could have. Yeah. They could have had the rest of the team been able to keep that energy going. They could have won that game. He's the missing piece, though, for them, I think. So, yeah. He's that puzzle piece. For They're going to be super interesting. I'm yeah, looking forward are. to watching them. The season is shaping up already. I mean, those to... last four getting in, it's, it's what, the Spurs, the Blazers, the Suns, the Grizz, and the Pelicans, right? Yeah, they're all fighting. Yeah. Golden State's That's out. That's fun. That is fun. And, and, and the T-Wolves are out. But in OKC at 7, Houston at 6. But Houston, uh, OKC is only two games back. Mm-hmm. And Houston still has... Like five, six games coming up. Last week I, I brought them up because the, t- their slate of games was just ridiculous over the next two and a half, three weeks. Yeah. And they don't play defense. No, they don't. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it's I, so, I don't know. I yeah. mean, yeah. Houston could slip to seven, and now they're playing the Clippers or, you know. That could uh, be fun, though. Well, that right now. Fun. Paul George, Kawhi Leonard versus Russ and, uh, and well, James Harden. Have, I think they'd have Memphis, or not Memphis, pardon me, uh, uh, Denver would be. Oh, the second seed? The second seed. And that could be an ups- upset for, uh, Yeah, you know. I can see that. I can see the Rockets beating the, the Nuggets. Actually, I can definitely see that. And now Clippers have leapt two, so they're a half game. No, they're a full game up on the Nuggets now. Okay, so they're two right now. They're two. Utah's three at a half game back of them. Utah's three? Way to sneak yeah. in there, Utah. Dude, since Conley went down, Ingles got put in the starting lineup, and he has been Murderers row. From I mean, three. three point. I've no. Yeah, like, yeah. Everybody's talking about that. It's just Dude. like Joe Ingles is like he is a man possessed. It's it is absolutely incredible to watch me. Like he is shooting. So I, two weeks ago is when I did it on the show. And he was shooting fifty something percent for three what? since Conley went oh, down. Since, okay, I mean, like for the season, no. I was like, wait, what? But he's had a couple games where he went. Like seven of eleven, she's like, dude, you're yeah, you're crushing, <laughs> yeah, man. But him and Bogdanovich up until that point were shooting almost forty two percent collectively yeah. between the two of them for so the season. That's so Utah, by the way, just that four and white shit. <laughs> uh, well, Ingles is practically American. Yeah, he's, Bogdanovich he's is not. Right, right, right. Uh, I like him. I mean, like, yeah, they should have kept Rubio. I mean, I don't know. See, I still like Conley. I liked Utah coming into the season. Just you need to have somebody else. So the defense cannot full, fully uh, focus on Mitchell. Right. You have to respect another ball handler, and they just didn't have it. So now you've got one. It's like, mm-hmm. all right, well, it makes them a lot more dynamic. A little bit. I mean, like, yeah, the third seed, jeez. I didn't know that. So, like, Denver's in fourth? Oh, Houston jumped two with uh, Dallas losing. Okay, so Houston is now fifth. Uh, yeah, Denver's fourth, Houston fifth, Dallas six, OKC seven, Memphis is eight. Then it goes San Antonio, Portland, Phoenix, New Orleans, Sacramento. What does San Antonio need? What do they need? I would say more three-point shooting. Okay. Interesting. But at the same time, they've steadily gotten a little bit better as the season has progressed this year. Yeah. So that's good. I think they're going to have like a run, like a, like a hot run soon. Well, Aldridge is shooting threes and hitting him in a pretty decent clip. DeRozan won't touch a three. No. Uh, to save his life. Yeah, but then you got that Brent Forbes guy, and you got Patty Mills obviously at the bench. Yeah. You know? They're a solid team, and they play great defense. Did you think Murray should. starts hitting threes? That could be a problem. He's been shooting better. Has he? Since LaMarcus has been shooting threes, mm-hmm. kind of it seems like it sparked Contagious. Murray a little bit. Okay. Uh, the Blazers are my big question mark. I just don't understand what's wrong with them. I don't know. All the chatter for years has been, should they break these two up? Right. But I don't think it's those two. They just need another guy. They need a Draymond type. Well, I mean, with Nurkic being out. Right. I so, forget that Nurkic is out. Yeah. Yeah, because they were like the number two seed last year. Or like number three seed when he was there. And so, Yeah, you need Nurkic. The the nothing trade of what, Trevor Ariza? Yeah. For Anthony Tolliver and uh, somebody yeah. else I can't remember. Right. It's like, okay, does that really help you? No, nah, it's just like it's just pieces. They're probably working around. But yeah, I don't know. They need Nurkic. Yeah, that's a good point. Um. Well, any any final words on Kobe? Yeah, Mamba out. Yeah, true. Uh, I no, don't... I'll, I'll say something. Uh, listen, as as an LA guy and a, and a, and a Laker guy, um, 
it's devastating to see. I mean, the guy who's <laughs> the only guy who's got two jerseys hung in that you know in yeah. the Staples Center uh, around like the greatness that is the Lakers and all of those Hall of Fame players, and to see that guy get two of them. Uh, you know, I put a quote from Chick Hearn, just like you know how he used to close games when Lakers were winning. Um, I just think that's probably the best thing you could say. It's just, it's sad. It's devastating. I've never seen anything like this. I've never felt anything like this. Um, and that Mamba mentality, I think that that phrase and what that means, I think that's his legacy of just like to the younger generation of of being like, hey, you can do anything you want to do. You just had really had to put your mind to it. Look mm-hmm. what I did. I beat a rape case. <laughs> That's one way to close on a man's legacy. Uh, I think we, we've summed it up. Look, even if you weren't a, a Laker fan or a Kobe fan, you still had nothing but respect for him. If you if you enjoyed the game of basketball, you feared Kobe. Yeah. Knowing full well, it's just like he can easily shoot them out of the game, but at any moment he can shoot them right back in. And there's something to fear. And He always commanded my respect, even if I didn't enjoy right. You know, the guy's brand of basketball at the time, just because I wanted him to pass. You see the greatness. Yes. <laughs> and he still got five championships. It's not like he wasn't you no, know, one he of the all times. He wasn't a scrub, dude. No. No. He was yeah. one of the all times. He wasn't Carmelo Anthony. Yes. He wasn't like, yeah, he was, yeah. He was playing defense, too. Exactly. He tried. He always tried. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a mentality, that mama mentality, but it had a mentality that was ferocious and undeniable and uh, will be missed uh, as evidenced by the ripple effect that it's had on. You know, pop culture, society, and sports. You know, in this country and other countries. Uh, so rest in peace to Mamba and all the other unfortunate, uh, you know, people that were part of that accident. Uh, our hearts and prayers go out to all those individuals and families. Thank you for tuning in this week. Where can people find you? Oh man, you know where to find me, everybody. Google. No, just uh, roast about anything. www.verbalviolence.tv. Uh, there you go. Hit him up. Uh, you can follow me online at Matt Nose. Thanks for watching the show this week. Make sure to leave a comment or something. I'd like to read the comments on this one. I want to see your uh, thoughts and experiences and everything that you guys have uh, for Kobe. It'll be it'll be cathartic for all of us, I think, to to go through and uh, relive our favorite moments of Kobe. Uh, I've got numerous, uh, even as a uh, you know guy that was uh, watching from afar. Uh, that is it for this week. Thank you so much for tuning into Dropping Dimes. We'll see you guys next week.